All right. Good morning, everybody. This is Ebony Love from Love Book Studios, and this is week nine of our Emma Mystery Quilt Along. So we are starting to get into, we haven't quite hit quilt assembly yet, but, um, but we're starting to um, get the building blocks together for the quilt assembly. And I hope that you are as excited to see the quilt as I am to reveal it. So this week we have been working on some more hand stitching and what's funny is that I know you guys won't believe me when I tell you this, but when I put this quilt together, I didn't realize how much hand stitching there actually was until we started hand stitching. So this week is more hand stitching. And actually, if you are really tired of hand stitching, you don't have to hand stitch. You can actually machine stitch uh, if you want to. So that is completely up to you. But the techniques that I am I am uh, teaching you this, this quilt along involve hand stitching. So, oh, wow. All right. I have to actually remember if I'm going to play the video in another window that I actually have to mute it first. <laughs> I'm going to do that. So anyway, I hope that you are um, keeping cool on this um, hot August morning. Can you believe it's August already? It's amazing. So I'm just getting my, trying to get my act together over here with the stuff they're working on. So if you do not want to hand stitch these, you can machine applique these pieces down. I am not going to be a purist. I'm certainly someone who does not do a lot of hand stitching. I actually prefer to do things by machine, but you know what? The, the hand stitching in this project is curiously addictive. So I hope you're having a good time uh, making the projects that we have here. So, uh, so I'll show you a couple of the things that we're hand stitching here. And I've got a couple of, a uh, couple of announcements and you know, we'll just see how it goes. So if you're here watching and you are in YouTube, hope you will leave a comment and say hello and ask any questions and just let us know that you're here. I know there are a few people over in the Facebook group and hopefully, you know, one of the questions was, you know, where are we supposed to be? Is it Facebook or is it YouTube? So uh, it's kind of both. So here's the thing. If I'm having technical problems, I can't tell you on YouTube <laughs> because that's where the technical problems are being had. So if I'm having technical problems, then, um, you know, Facebook in our um, in our Designers and Makers Quilting Academy is where I would uh, post that. And that's typically where people are asking, hey, are we actually having a webinar this morning? So if you are curious about whether we are uh, meeting, having a good time, you know, getting out, getting a chat, um, that is the, the Facebook group is really where that's going to be announced. So, uh, so that is um, facebook.com slash groups slash D-A-M-Q-A, which stands for Designers and Makers Quilting Academy. So if you join us there, then you'll always get the announcement as to whether we're going to go live or not. Now, if you want to actually participate and see the webinar, you've got to pop over to YouTube because that is where the live or the live streaming is actually happening. So, uh, so that's where you need to be. So it's kind of both places. Um, if you sit on my YouTube channel, I think it will, um, and actually if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, it will notify you when I go live. So if that's something that you're interested in because you don't do Facebook, then if you subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, and keep your alerts on, it'll tell you when I go live on the channel. So let's see. Oh, look, all these people pop up. So Mary's here. Good morning, Mary. So Mary's finishing up a project. So she's working on that while she's watching. That's fantastic. Brooke is here. Um, hi, Brooke. So Brooke's not doing Emma, but I'm glad that you joined our webinar because that's the thing. Like, even though we're talking about stuff around Emma, you also get uh, tips and things that we share that might help you with another project. And it's just fun to s just chat with you guys. So Janice is here and so is Delia. Good morning to you both. So um, so that's fantastic. Again, if you are in YouTube, there is a chat, uh, like a, a little chat window where you can, where you can post and just let us know that you are, that you're here and you're watching or 
you can hang in the background. You don't have to do that. So awesome. So this week we are working on, oh wait, let me do my public service announcements first so that I don't forget those. You know what? I want to get, I keep moving these glasses on my nose because I'm kind of digging the, you know, like the, the little librarian look kind of thing. Um, I need to get my eyes uh, checked. So that'll be public service announcement number one. So I haven't had an eye exam in a couple years, so I probably need to do that because uh, things are starting to not be very uh, in focus <laughs> with these glasses. I do have progressive lenses, so I'm supposed to look, I can't remember which end I'm supposed to look out of. But anyway, so I keep adjusting my glasses. So go get your eye exam if you haven't had one. Um, number two, um, when have you had your mammograms? So I hope you're doing those annually or as directed by your physician. I had mine yesterday. Uh, those are super fun, aren't they? Um, so if you've had one, you know, um, if you haven't had one, oh, they're just such a joy. So, um, so I can't call them particularly fun, but you know what? They're not that, um, they're not that super hard, um, either. It's just, you get in these uncomfortable kinds of, you know, gyrations of your body, uh, in order to get your, um, chest smashed in between two plastic plates for the x-ray, which is super fun. And I know what's going to end up happening is I'm going to have to have um, the ultrasound. Um, there is, um, if you're in a state that, um, that, that has rules like this, so the state of Illinois actually um, um, has a law that if you have what's called dense breast tissue that you are they are required to notify you and the thing about having a dense breast to tissue it's on a spectrum obviously but if you have dense breast tissue it shows up on your x-ray as white but also tumors and things like that also show up as white on the x-ray so um, so what happens is if you have dense breast tissue the mammogram can either mask the uh you know mask what's going on or can generate some false positives so they have you so if you know that about yourself then you can talk to your doctor about whether you need to have um, further exams so i'm probably going to need a further ultrasound um, which is a different um, procedure but it should um, I'm still reading through the material <laughs> about it, but it just is a different diagnostic um, procedure. So um, so that is my public service announcement to you all to go uh, to schedule a mammogram. Have one if you haven't had one because um, it's just good to do that. Good to, you know, good to know. So um, good morning, Trish, and good morning, Karen. So Karen says she's working on cutting this week's blocks while watching. We got back from Niagara Falls last night. That's super exciting. I've never been to Niagara Falls, and I would really uh, like to go, but I'm also scared of heights. So <laughs> that's probably not so not so great. And you know what's funny? So I'm scared of heights, but I ride airplanes, and I can sit in the window seat, and I can look out. And I think the difference is because like in an airplane um you're you're contained <laughs> right and if you're in like i don't do roller coasters roller coasters just scare the scare the crap out of me i don't like the way i feel like on a roller coaster but it's like it just seems like it's less like it's less controlling you're so exposed and when you go to niagara falls you're like standing on this platform and there's like all this water beating around and uh, i also haven't been to the grand canyon but somehow it's like you know a thousand feet is really terrible but 30,000 feet I'm fine so explain that I can't explain it I don't know what that is um, other thing I did yesterday is oh gosh look it's Katie it's I mean it's Mary from Katie Texas so that's so fun hello Mary from Katie that's so much fun I'd love to see you um, I met Mary I sometimes run into Mary at uh, like quilt market and quilt festival and it's so much fun to run into her and see her. It's, uh, I just have a blast <laughs> with Mary. Awesome. So uh, the other thing that I started yesterday was I restarted my, um, I restarted an exercise program. So I'm reinstating uh, exercise. So I guess this week was just all about health, you know, healthy attitude, healthy 
um, you know, taking care of health and doing healthy things. So I uh, started the um, back at the gym yesterday and oh my gosh. So I do a, it's a 30 minute um, circuit program. And so when you go in, they tell you like they have the plan already laid out um, and they usually have different stations that you rotate to. And so you're just doing a couple of reps. And what's nice about that is that it's like you're doing these things, there's 30 seconds at a time. So 30 seconds of something intense and then you rest for 10 seconds and then you do a different thing for 30 seconds that's intense. So, um, but me, I can't do intense yet. <laughs> so I just do the best that I can. And the thing that I am starting to notice is that um, I'm not getting good sleep and, um, and um, I'm not eating well and I'm pretty sedentary because, you know, quilting's pretty sedentary and getting up to go iron is not really strenuous activity, right? Um, so I'm not getting, and, and also I work, um, I, I work a full-time job and that's also pretty sedentary. I just walk to meetings just to sit in a meeting. So, so there's not really a lot of activity going on and I just need to, I need to do something about that. Like I'm feeling it, I'm seeing it. Uh, and uh, definitely, um, you know, not wanting to continue that journey. So I started um, started working out yesterday. So it was pretty intense, but I took it, um, you know, I took it gradually and they gave me this little bracelet. Um, it's like a little, um, it's a yellow bracelet so that all the trainers know I'm new. <laughs> so that they don't push me too hard and then I also have to be careful not to push myself too hard because you know I'm in this class and a lot of these people have been you know kind of doing this for a while but you know what I just want to get strong I want to not get winded walking up a flight of stairs you know um, I want to be able to carry stuff <laughs> you know and do things so yeah that's super important so um, and then today a friend of mine his uh, his grandmother passed and she would have been 100 years old today. So he asked his friends to walk a mile in her honor because she used to, what she used to do all the way up until she was, um, uh, you know, she started slowing down, but she used to always walk eight to 10 miles and she would walk around the high school track. And he said that as she got older, she couldn't go as far, but she would still, every morning she would get up and she would walk around the track and she would always do at least one to two miles um, every day. And so he asked his friends if in her honor um, for her, what would have been her 100th birthday, if we would walk a mile for her. So I'm gonna go out for a walk today and see where I get to. So, um, so if you get a chance and it's not too super hot, go out, take a walk. Go see what's going on. Um, so yeah, um, let's see. Trish says, I'm finishing up a cancer quilt for a cousin as I watch. My family definitely keeps up with their breast exams. That's fantastic, Trish. Keep it up. Um, and then Mary says, um, it's always good to see you, but all that sounds painful. You know what? It's, um, it's hard getting started, but I think that like once, once I was there, I felt awkward and uncomfortable and you know other people are able to do more than I can you know and I had to do like one exercise I just couldn't do it with the weights first of all because I'm pretty uncoordinated <laughs> and so we did this like boxing move and you're supposed to rotate your back leg as you do this boxing move and I just couldn't figure out how to do it and so I ended up having to watch this woman next to me, but I had to take the weights. I had to not use the weights because that was kind of distracting me. Like, cause you're like, all right, I got to keep the weights up and I have to keep my form and I got to do this. And it's like, I couldn't do, I couldn't figure that out. So once I put the weights down, I, I figured it out, but then it was time to rotate to a new, um, to a new area. We did this one exercise that was, um, it was, um, um, pull-ups, but you're laying on your back and you're kind of tinted up like a table and you're supposed to pull yourself up. Oh my God, that was tough. And then we had to do burpees. And I don't know if you know what a burpee is, but it's like you jump up and then you get on the ground and you do a push up and then you jump up. And that is just, oh my gosh, that is, well, I guess technically it's like you jump, um, then a squat and then a plank, a push up, a squat and a jump. So it's like this reverse, you know, kind of thing, but oh my gosh, that is, <laughs> that's pretty, and it's, yeah, it's pretty intense, but, um, but it was good to just get moving. 
And uh, I was telling the trainer, you know, I have an elliptical uh, machine here in the house, but there's just, I think there's something different about, you know, getting up and walking across the hall and getting on a machine versus like having a place to go and a different exercise to do, right? Because um, elliptical is really just cardio and you need both cardio and strength training as part of uh, kind of healthy uh, balance. So, so it's nice to be able to go someplace, like have a destination and it's a place where people are expecting you and, um, you know, a place where you can be, um, you know, kind of visible and get help with your form and all those kinds of things. And so I think for me, it's just, it's the starting and just taking that first step, right? To, to get up and get out and go move and go do something. So, um, so that I was, uh, and Mary said, discipline is the, is the clue. And yeah, that is, um, that it's, it's very real to kind of have that discipline. So I'm hoping to do, um, every other day. So today's my rest day. Um, and then, um, uh, except I'm going to go for a walk, um, but resting from the intense activity. And I don't believe they do programs on Sundays, but, um, you know, the, we'll see about working Saturdays into my routine, but I decided not to go today and make today a rest day. And actually, you know, my muscles are, they're a little bit sore, but not, um, but it's not as bad as in past cases where I've pushed myself too hard. So I feel good about kind of where I'm at and just starting. And one of the sayings that's printed on the wall of the, of the gym says that no matter how slow you go, you're still lapping the people on the couch, <laughs> which is a true statement, right? So, so that's the thing, just starting. Starting is the key. Um, so yeah, that is, that's where we want to get to. Awesome. So I think today, so I think those are all my public service announcements, right? So we talked about, um, eye care and breast care and, um, um, overall health and, you know, get moving, keep yourself moving. Um, Yes. Oh, and if you're a man, you can't really get a mammogram, right? So, um, so, well, I guess some people could, but, you know, typically if you don't have enough uh, booby to squeeze in between the machine, then they can't do the mammogram for you. But what you can do is um, self-exams. So everyone should be doing um, breast self-exams at least on a monthly basis because, um, and uh, the thing that I found out too is that when men get physicals, a breast uh, exam is actually not part of their physical. And so, uh, so you're going to know you're going to be the one who knows what those changes are. So if you feel any changes in, um, you know, uh, in, if you feel any lumps or you feel any changes in just kind of how your, um, how your, your chest feels, then that's something to bring up to your doctor and then they can do, um, other things. So, um, so yeah, so mammograms, I guess technically are for women, but breast self exams are for everybody. So hope you're doing that. I have like a card in my um, shower that shows you how to do the breast self exam. Um, so I think you can download instructions on the website or on, um, just Google it and you'll see it. I'm not going to demonstrate the breast self exam <laughs> on my YouTube channel. That's a little less PG. Um, but anyway, how do we go down that rabbit hole? We want to talk about hand stitching. So, um, so yeah, everybody keep it moving, get your health taken care of because you know, you got one body and that's it. So, all right, on to what we're doing. So we are doing hand stitching today. Um, so we're going to be using the overhead camera and, um, I'm going to have to, I've got my little projects over here, so I'll get myself organized a little bit. So, um, yeah, let's do that. Let me, let me switch the overhead camera and then I will reach up and turn it on. <laughs> All right. Okay. So here we are with the overhead and I'm going to zoom in. All right, and uh, scooch over. Here we go. So I guess I have to come out a little bit because you can't see that. You got to be able to see the whole block. Okay, so here's our block. And oh my goodness, this is just 
one of the most adorable things I think I have ever seen. <laughs> so, um, and I don't do a lot of EPP. I don't do a lot of hand stitching, but I think um, I love how these hexagons look in this block. And I hope that you did too when you saw it uh, pop up on the uh, pattern yesterday, so, or on Wednesday. So I'm just looking for my needle and looking for my thread here. So a couple of things. All right, so, sorry, I'm just, I'm digging in over my, um, you know, my little craft case. So I need my thimble and I need my thread and I've got a needle and then somewhere is a pair of scissors. Awesome. So we've got that going. So we've got everything that we need. So this piece is still, um, it still has all the papers attached. So before you take the papers out, hopefully you took the time to take this to your iron and give this a good press. And what you're doing is I'm having you press so that we get these outside um so these outside seams or the the outside of this block um, set so that we're setting that seam allowance underneath and um, we want to make sure that 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 stays so that we can stitch this together oh and we also need pins so remember our a little box of applique pins and this little pin cushion that we that I talked to you about last week that I made on it's so easy TV series 1700 which you can download on the internet <laughs> so all right so those are my supplies so you need to be able to take the the basting out of the paper so that you can remove them and I have two kinds of basting here I did thread basting and I did glue basting. So for the thread basting, the easiest way to pull out the stitches is to just go um, and pull them out. <laughs> so, um, so the stitches are pretty wide, so you can just take a pin or use your finger or something and just pull the stitches out and grab the knot and pull out that last stitch. So that becomes now just junk. <laughs> and um, so now I can pop out the paper. Okay, so that paper just comes out. And ideally, as you stitch this together, you were able to not stitch the paper itself. Although, um, and I don't know if you can see that necessarily, but I've got a little, I didn't actually stitch the edges, but I did nick it a couple of times and get really close to stitching the edge in, but I didn't actually penetrate the paper itself. The second kind of basting that I have in here is glue basting. And I typically would use a stiletto to release the glue. Um, I don't have a stiletto with me, so I'm just going to use this pin. And you're just, and ideally if you glued, you know, if you did use glue, you didn't use so much that you can't actually release the paper this way. So you just go all the way around and use your instrument, whatever you've got to release. Oh, I know what I could use. I do have, you know, I used this piece to put these down. I wonder if I can use, so this is a finger, uh, a finger stiletto. And I think I can use my finger stiletto to release the glue. So same idea. You're just running the stiletto underneath your glue to get that released. So, um, and sorry that I didn't do any of this in advance. So you kind of have to s stitch with me, but some of you are working on projects. So you probably don't mind that I'm going a little bit slow here, but I didn't take the time at first to release all of these papers. So unfortunately you've got to watch me do all of the releasing of the glue on these units. So I'm doing that, just loosening the glue, getting that all undone, working my way around. Okay. 
and this is all so that I can take the papers out. And normally, if I were making a large um, quilt instead of just appliquing this down, what I would have actually is I would only take the papers out of the units that were secured on all six sides. So if this were the only unit that I had, the only paper that I would take out is the center. But because we're going to be applicating this to a block, I need to take all of the papers out. So if you're doing a larger EPP project, just remember secure all six sides before you remove your papers or your basting stitches. So just depending on what you're doing, in this case, it all comes out awesome. So once you get that released, it should be fairly straightforward to get the papers out. And if your papers are not in too bad a shape, you can reuse them again. So um, what happens with the papers that are, um, so if you, you know, if you nick them too much or they get too many holes, like this was my center um, unit. If they get too many holes, it's hard for them to kind of stay together. Um, so, but you should be able to reuse your papers as long as they're in good shape and you haven't um, kind of um, messed up the edges too much. I thought I went around all six of these. Okay, here we go. Um, no, apparently I did not. <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, when you take the papers out then, you kind of need to reform the, you know, reform the sides. And this is where the good pressing, you know, would have come in, in handy. And if you need to repress those, I think the, the, the thing about glue basting is it's a little bit more um, distorting than the thread basting because with the thread basting you're just pulling out the threads and the paper comes right out with the glue basting you've got to manipulate um, the edges a little bit all right so there's our guy and he fits um, into this um, block and what you want to do is center this guy in the block and I am you know I could go in and of course measure this and measure where it's supposed to be but you know me I tend to just eyeball things so this guy fits in pretty well um, into this block without too much extra stuff going on so when I pin this down I want to be able to pin the edges so so I want him to be pretty well centered and once I get him pretty well centered, then I kind of don't want him moving um, so that I can pin him down. So, um, so I'm pinning through my um, board here and you're probably like, how on earth are you going to get <laughs> this, this pinned if you are pinning straight through? You know, you're not pinning a butterfly. So what I'm really doing is I'm just pinning the side that I'm not working on to the location so that I can go ahead and work on these other spots without getting too far, um, you know, without pushing this guy too far to the way. So I've pinned kind of these lower three and then I'm working on the upper um, hexagon. So I am gonna come in and just pin down these seams at the top here. And I'm not too worried, of course I want the seam allowance to be turned under, but I'm not too worried about the, um, you know, the, the edges of that seam kind of sticking out because as I come through, I can actually just take my needle and my needle will be used to as I stitch, I can turn under those extra edges. So I'm just gonna pin these guys and you know, trying to keep it nice and flat, trying to keep it even, um, making sure that as I pin this around, it's in the spot where I want this unit to be. And I'm pinning perpendicular to the, uh, the seams so that the you can pin the other way, but I just feel like on this one, if I turn my pins the other way, it's more likely because I have so many pins, 
they'll be more likely to catch the thread. Okay, so now that I have these three pinned, I can take the pins off of this edge and then rotate this around. And if it helps you to, um, you know, kind of not be fighting against the, the hexagons here, you can go ahead and pin the, the edges that you just pinned to your working surface. So that way you can come in here and go ahead and get your items, your, your, um, these other edges pinned down. Okay. So off I go. So just tucking under this edge and every once in a while you want to check, is this still flat? Is this where I need it to be for this to remain flat? And you might feel more comfortable. I'm just dropping these pins all over the place. You might feel more comfortable working on a hard surface rather than a soft surface. It's completely up to you, but I have this soft surface here that I am just going to use to my advantage to get these edges pinned down into place. So this is very similar to what we did with our bias stems. So we're just pinning the, um, the parts that we need to sew. We're pinning that um, down so that we can remove pins as we come to them and be able to manipulate um, things the way that we need to. All right, so this is my last pin. So now I can take this off the surface and now this guy is pinned down. So we're gonna come in and stitch around the, um, and stitch around the hexagon. This is, oh my goodness, you know what I did? I pinned this the wrong way. So I just spent, I just spent the last five minutes pinning this in the complete wrong way. So I am going to uh, take this off and begin again. So I did all of that and I pinned him in the way that I did not want to pin him. So here we go again. So in case you missed it the first time, hey, I guess I should have checked. Did anybody, was anybody saying, hey, you're pinning that wrong? Oh my goodness. So, yeah, so Karen, you just said, hey, <laughs> did, uh, did I print the wrong directions? Um, this is, um, let's see, am I working, well, I guess the question is, am I working on the wrong block? That is an excellent question, Miss Karen. Um, let me see, I could have sworn that this was block nine. Um... Let me just check. Let me just check because this is the week that I actually, I um, I downloaded the pattern, but I didn't print it for myself. But this is week nine. And, oh, yep, I sure did. Sorry, this is week 10. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you will, um, you are getting a preview of, uh, of, of week 10. Oh my goodness, I am quite embarrassed. So when I looked, so this week does have a hexagon in it. It's the single hexagons. So, um, so the single hexagons, I don't have those with me. The single hexagons are getting um, pinned. So I guess next week I won't have anything to show you, but, <laughs> but it's hexagons two weeks in a row. Um, so thanks. Uh, Thanks, Karen. Um, you didn't print the wrong directions. I am doing the wrong tutorial. So, um, so this week is, um, there's a single, we did eight of these uh, single um, hexagons. It's the same principle, but uh, this is us, uh, this is us stitching down. So I guess this is what I get for not printing the pattern and just glancing at it. Cause as soon as I saw a hexagon, I was like, hey, we're working on hexagons this week, and so these are the ones that I pulled. This is the uh, this is the block that I pulled down. So, um, way to go, Ebby. <laughs> so, so I basically just revealed your assignment for next week. Um, so anyway, um, so we'll just we'll just keep going because technically, uh, next week um, you are doing this activity. And it's more hand stitching so I can just teach you hand stitching and then you can um, apply it to this week and next week awesome so here we go 
All right. Um, so Karen says, no problem. I like the sneak preview and the ability to get the hand sewing done ahead of time. So, oh, sorry. It looks like I popped my head into the, uh, in, into the camera view. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. So continuing on, we are pinning. So, um, so we're getting this guy pinned down to the center of this block. So, and honestly, um, I know it's a little bit, um, you know, it's a little bit of a preview, but if you looked at the blocks that we put together and you saw, hey, there's eight, you know, there's one of this block and there's one of this block, hmm, I wonder if they go together, you know? <laughs> so um, it's not like that is, is um, I'm revealing part of the mystery, but it's not like that would have been hard for someone to uh, to guess. So, um, so I'm not super worried about it, but I am a little bit embarrassed that I completely pulled the wrong block for this week. So, all right. It looks like um, our our city, so the the village that I live in, um, has uh, found. Uh, loose dogs. So someone in the neighborhood has their dogs running around off the leash and um, they're trying to get hold of these uh, these dogs that are running around. So they keep sending text messages and telling people to make sure your dogs are released, etc. It's just like, hey, you know, call the um, call animal control and have the dogs picked up and then you will find out who the owner is. Um, so they do text messages and calling um, through the neighborhood. So anyway, so that is the fun of living in the suburbs. Um, I don't have pets, but, uh, I do remember, uh, one year when I was really early, um, into living here, I was out working in my garden and, uh, this little boy came, um, and, and it was actually the dog came and the boy, was getting pulled. So it's like, who's on the leash? You know, it felt like the, the little boy was on the leash because this dog must have outweighed him by 50 or 60 pounds. And the dog just marched right up across my lawn, up to my garden and nipped me on the hand. And you know, it was kind of, was so shocking because it's like, hey, you know, you shouldn't have your, your kid. If the dog is bigger than your kid, you probably should be at least out supervising, right? You shouldn't have, um, you know, a dog that can, that uh, actually can't be in control under the leash. You should not have a little kid walking that. Um, even though I understand, you know, you want to give kids responsibility and this sense of independence. But honestly, if your dog can drag your kid across um, the sidewalk, then your kid is not old enough to walk the dog by themselves. So, hey, you get all kinds of public service announcements today. Um, all right, so I am just threading my needle. So I managed to correct the pinning uh, there. And here we go. So I usually will bury my knot on the underside. And this is, I'm using 80 weight thread. This is, uh, if you ordered a supply kit, I put a spool of 80 weight thread in your kit. And what I did is, um, the 80 weight thread that I put in your kit is kind of a neutral one that should blend in with all of your colors, as opposed to needing, you know, three or four spools of thread just to get the color match. So what I try to do with the supply kits is not um, kind of like back you into a corner where you feel like you have to have, you know, every single thing that I'm using. And um, I want to be able to show you how you can get the same thing kind of accomplished um, and not go overboard like I do, but I happen to have a bunch of different colors and this isn't an exact match, but it's, um, but it's pretty close. However, um, that light sage green that you have is still fine um, for the edge, especially with the stitching that we're doing because it's not, we're not doing like a whip stitch around the edge, we're doing like a hidden stitch behind. So just like we did last week with the bias stem. So I started my knot um, underneath and I came up through the edge of the uh, of the the unit so I'm gonna move the camera again zoom in a little bit so you can see kind of what I'm doing more closely so I brought the thread up 
through this uh, through the side of this seam and so then my needle is going to go down in the same place and I'm going to come up just a little bit away that's probably less than a quarter inch so I'm going to come up again through that side seam and what I'm trying to do is get the threads that are on the side or either just on the side or underneath so that my stitches are concealed so I'm not trying to do a whip stitch um, up the edge I'm trying to just catch the edge from underneath and pull it back down so that is so that's the stitch that I'm using so it's the same stitch that we were using to attach the bias stems and so if you are doing that then your stitches shouldn't really show on the top side. Of course, you're going to see the stitches if you come up and look really closely and scrutinize, but this 80 weight thread that we're using, it's so fine that um, it's really, it, you know, and the color that I chose for you should be sufficient to kind of blend in with the, you know, with the unit that we're stitching. And so it shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't be showing. and it's just practice if you're finding that your stitches are showing this is just look at this as practice and you have plenty of these to practice on so practice just catching the the very edge or the stitch or you know or the the um the edge here or just underneath the edge so that when you pull your stitch that thread gets buried uh, in the unit so the other option is to use a heavier weight thread and do a decorative stitch around the edge. So I've been teaching you kind of these, um, these hidden sewing techniques. If you want your thread to show, use something big and bold. Find a turkey red or something like that um, to, um, to use. You don't have to hide your stitches if you don't want to. If you want to do a blanket stitch or a whip stitch around the edge, that is completely, completely up to you. That is a personal design decision. You do not have to do what I do. I just like showing you different ways of doing things, but you are always welcome to do whatever you want to do on your own project. So I'm just gonna stop for a second and flip over and see if there are any questions posted to the group or into the Facebook page. So I'm just checking really quickly here and I don't see anyone who has uh, commented or asked a question um, for that. So we can just, uh, we can just keep going. So we are working our way around the the hexagon here and for those who have just joined this is the week nine webinar and i'm showing you week 10 um, blocks but the technique that i'm showing here is the same for uh, this week and for next week okay so when i get to the corner what i'm doing here is i'm taking a stitch right in the corner and then i'm going to take my needle to the back so normally i'm working you know completely from the front but when i get into this little divot here i need to um it's really hard to kind of take a stitch and be able to come up on that next side in the right place so i'm bringing my needle just completely to the back so that i can bring my needle up from the back into the spot where i want it Okay, so I am trying to get right next to this corner and come up this way. And now this, there's a little bit of this edge peeking out. So I'm gonna tuck that under. And when I come up with my next stitch, I'm gonna stitch, try to stitch in front of, and sorry, I'm losing, I'm losing my thimble. It is a, uh, this is not my, I think this is my winter thimble. I need to get a summer thimble. And the tough part is if I'm gonna get a summer thimble, I have to get a summer thimble in the summer. 
<laughs> so that, uh, but all the shows that I go to are in the fall and winter. So, um, so my thimble is, uh, is not fitting exactly right. All right. So, uh, these next stitches, what I'm just trying to do is come up in front of the, the, um, that seam allowance that's turned under so that it gets tucked behind my stitching and it doesn't peek through. All right, so that's kind of how we turn those inside corners. So again, when you get to an inside corner, just take a stitch through the corner, bring your needle to the back, and then you can bring your needle up any place that you want um, in order to be able to come back down the side, okay? So, and again, this doesn't take super long to do. I do keep my stitches fairly close together. They're less than a quarter of an inch, um, but they're not as dense as, um, you know, a machine stitch would be, right? Because our machine stitches are, um, you know, maybe you're getting 10 or 12 stitches per inch, something like that. And I don't hand stitch that, that closely. All right, so when you get to a pointy corner, so pointy corner here, I come up through the corner, okay? But because it's a pointy corner, I can still work from the top. And here is another edge that I have to tuck under. So again, I kind of take my needle and I poke the edge and kind of tuck it underneath. And if you need to use your fingernail to hold it, while you take the next stitches, go ahead and do that. So I'm bringing this uh, up and putting my stitches in front of the loose seam allowance so that now when that stitch is done, that seam allowance is tucked behind my stitching so it's not going to peek out, okay? And as you work, if it helps you to kind of keep track of where you are. So if we look at the back of this, I have gone um, halfway or, you know, quarter of a way down one side. And then I have, oh wait, sorry, I started over here. This is where I am now. I started halfway down one side and I did a point and then down one side and I did a center point and now I'm coming up this direction and this is where I am now. So if you want to take out pins from the point where you have already stitched to kind of help you mark where you are, feel free to do that. The You can also just look at the back of your work and see where you are. Okay, so that is really what we're doing. <laughs> and you just keep going with that. So every side is pretty much the same. I have, um, you know, I have seam allowances that loose seam allowances that I have to tuck under. And like I said, you know, do you want to put it behind your, hold it with your fingernail and try to put your stitches in front of the seam allowance. I don't, I try not to put it through the seam allowance. I really want my stitches to be in front of the seam allowance so that it stays tucked under. I don't want there to be an opportunity for it to pop back up, okay? So that was another outside corner. So my last stitch was directly in the corner and then my next stitch just comes down the side and you just keep going like that. This is perfect work to be doing, um, for me, not on the train because I cannot get, um, there's actually too much movement for me. Some people can do this kind of handwork in the car. Um, I have not had a chance to try handwork in the car because I'm usually the one driving everywhere, but um, if you feel comfortable doing handwork in the car and it doesn't give you motion sickness or you know, you're fine um, doing that. This is, you know, perfect to take on road trips. It's perfect to do while you're in front of the television, um, in a doctor's waiting room, like if you were gonna go get a mammogram. Although yesterday, when I went to the office, they were, um, I walked in and literally, I walk in, I check in, a nurse comes out 
and um, it looks like I'm just doing advertisements for Sony, doesn't it? Um, and a nurse comes out and they're like, oh good, here's your two o'clock patient. And I was like, oh wow, that was so great. Um, so, so I actually did not get a chance to sit down and do anything. Um, I, was, um, I was basically called to the back immediately upon arrival. So I didn't have a chance to do that, but most of the time when you're at a doctor's office, there is some sort of a wait. Um, if you take your car to a full service car wash, you know, while the car is being washed, you could be doing this. So, um, you know, if you keep your EPP supplies with you, and you have that opportunity, you know, if you're at a kid's soccer game or something, you know, I don't know, maybe that's not the right place to do it because you're supposed to be watching the game. Um, but uh, I don't know, just there's lots of places where we do waiting and it could be something for our hands to do instead of checking Facebook. So that's kind of my mantra, do handwork instead of Facebook. Um, awesome so that's it you know you just work your way around and eventually you will get this uh, block finished so I'll just zoom out if I can figure out where the zoom thing is so you just work your way around like I said removing pins as you go sometimes my pins look like they just want to come out on their own but just keep working your way around and stitching it down and eventually you'll get done. If you want to give it a little bit more security, you can also do, um, if you want to do decorative stitching, um, on the inside, you could come in a quarter of an inch around each hexagon and stitch maybe, you know, like I said, that turkey red or, or um, you know, something that kind of complements the fabric. You can come in and stitch down each hexagon. You can do stitch in the ditch um, here. Um, you can come in and, you know, outline the, you know, the inside of the block. You can do all sorts of things. You can, you know, embroider initials or um, whatever it is that you want to do with these. If you feel like this will get more secured, you can also just wait until it's time for the final quilting and you can quilt this down and use your quilting stitches to quilt around and then stitch in the ditch, which could look pretty cool um, if you're kind of outlining the hexagon and then filling in the hexagon spaces. That could look really cool too. So that would be my um, my advice if you're looking to have that secured down a bit more. Awesome. So let's see. I still, I don't see any questions in the group and I don't see anything on um, Facebook. So that is really, you know, I gave you public service announcements. Um, we talked about summer thimbles versus winter thimbles. Um, different, I gave you a sneak peek of next week. <laughs> so I guess I'll have to do the opposite and <laughs> next week show you the previous week um, for how we do that. So, um, and then um, I guess if I'm going to do that, I'll just show you the other one. The other one, um, the other block is very similar. Um, so same concept, but this one we only do one. And the other one, it's actually the same block. It's just quite a bit bigger. And so the applique um, doesn't fit exactly, um, you know, doesn't fit the same way where you can eyeball it. What I would recommend is that you fold the, you fold your block in half and give it a little crease and fold it in half the other way and give it a little crease so that you get those, uh, you get the centers marked and then you can align your unit on the center there and then pin it. Of course, remove your papers, um, but same thing. So you can have this along the center line and then center this uh, on the vertical and then stitch that down. So this, um, I don't know which I prefer better. Like this has a lot of white space around it where this is really um, kind of um, why do I feel like I still did this the wrong way maybe I'm just reading too much into it but I still feel like somehow 
this got turned in the block and it is not does anybody see that like how did that I still don't understand how that happened because <laughs> I could have sworn that this is what I did I could have sworn that this is what I did and somehow it got turned. So I am going to be undoing this again. <laughs> so now I have the stitching. Oh my gosh, you guys, this just must not be my day. This is the direction that it is supposed to be in this, this way. Um, and somehow it has been rotated and it's not even rotated like, oh, I know why. Okay. <laughs> Do you guys see that? How, um, oh my gosh, I need sleep or something. <laughs> because, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is how, this is how, how, how it happened, you guys. Just the slow, um, I'm a little slow on the uptake. So the, these flower blocks are not, um, they're, they're not, I mean, they're symmetrical, but they're symmetrical in one direction. So. <laughs> So if I turn my block this way, it goes this way. And then if I'm looking at it from this direction, then it is turned. Don't worry about me. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then to think I completely unpinned it and then repinned it only to find out that I did the exact same thing. So yeah, if you're looking at it, it's only going to be, it's like a clock, right? It's right twice a day. Um, okay. Whew, goodness. All right. Mary says she just finished her project Four placemats have binding place and connected and the bobbin just ended. That's a perfect, that's perfect, Mary. So <laughs> this is what happens when we are live. You just don't know what, you don't know what is going to happen. And apparently, uh, I am just, uh, that took a while for me to connect the dots because I was like, how does this keep getting turned sideways? You know how it keeps getting turned sideways? Because I keep turning the block sideways. So anyway, don't be silly like I am. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed uh, this week's webinar. Um, the, um, you know, the, you can work on next week's assignment, but if you're working on this week's assignment and you want information on it, then I guess you're just going to have to wait until next week to see it. All right, you guys, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm going to go for my walk and, um, and then do some sewing. All right, take care. <laughs>